Now, here's what I want to uh, show you just to make sure that you're doing this right because it's a bit, there's so many steps, right? I'll come to your question in a minute. Uh, your calculator is even smarter than what we've just shown, right? It can actually go straight to the gradient and the y-intercept. It can do it in one hit, okay? Now, the syllabus wants us to be able to understand how to do it step by step. That's why they made three marks and they gave us a big chunk of space. But I still want you guys to be able to verify for yourself. So come back, you store all the data there in your calculator. Clear it, sorry, clear the screen. One last time, shift one to go into all your options, right? This um, gradient and the y-intercept, they're related to this regression line, the line of best fit. So if you go back into five for regression, you'll see two letters there at the top, A and B, A and B. Just remember that for a second. Remember when we went to mode and I said stat, and then I asked you to choose. And there wasn't a label that said bivariate data. And we said, oh, well, it's, it's option two. And I just said, don't worry about it right now. Now I want you to pay attention to what it says. <laughs> Not worry, but just notice. Do you see what A plus BX says? A plus BX is just another way of writing the line of best fit, the regression line. The A is going to be the y-intercept. The B, this is why it's a bit confusing and why I didn't want you to be distracted by it before. In this case, they've used B to indicate gradient. Okay? So if I come back out of there, I'm going to go shift, one, five. When I press one, I'm expecting this will give me the y-intercept. Bam. In one hit. Okay? So this is a way to check that you did this right. In the same way, if you clear it again, you go shift, one, five. I'm going to go to two. I'm expecting to get the gradient. There it is, in one hit. So I would use this as a check, right? You can make sure you've gone through your steps, you've got the right number. Right, so what is the A and the B? Um, the, the B, that number there is the gradient. And the A that we just found out, we just checked, was the line intercept. Pretty much just, like, in the working out, we just write the formula that we should do. If, how do they know if we Okay, so, the other way. good question, yep. Yeah. Right. So, let's come back here. I okay, now, in truth, and the reason why I didn't show it to you before is because I just didn't want you to get lost in the, in the forest, okay? What you actually need to show for your three marks, for your three marks, is your use of this formula, okay? So therefore, let's move this down a little bit. Here's what I'm going to do. To show that I've actually used this correctly, right? The gradient is actually made of three things. R, standard deviation for Y, standard deviation for X. Okay? So therefore, I'm going to go to my calculator and my calculator tells me that R is equal to, oh, we worked this out in part one, 0 0.907. That's R. And I'm going to multiply that by, and I can work out the standard deviation for Y. I'm just going to find it out now. It's this, 13.73. And I can work out the standard deviation for x, which is 9.05. Okay. So what this line shows is my use of the formula and that I understand how these things fit together. Okay. In the same way, down here, Move this out of the way. Move this out of the way. The y-intercept is consisting of, again, three pieces, right? There's the mean for y. So I get that from my calculator again. 66. Take away. What am I going to put next? Look at the following data sheet. 1.37, That'll do. Okay, it's enough to recognize that's what the number is. Times. Now, by the way, I should point out. Shh, I should point out, I'm using my calculator to do all this, but do you remember? They have it right there. That you've got them? They've been calculated for you? Okay. I still suggest that you use your calculator to actually crunch it out because. I was really frustrated at this actually. Um, and I had to really, really check this. See how uh, here on the question, part one says, correct to three decimal places. That is highly accurate. 
Have a look at the data provided here. How many decimal places do you see? One, two, and zero. One, two, uh, or zero. Now, if you use these, you actually get the. If you use these in part one, you actually get the answer wrong. You don't get zero point nine zero seven, which is the answer. You get. You'll laugh at this. You get zero point nine zero six. You're off by the third decimal place, but that's kind of the decimal place they're looking for. Okay. That's yeah, it is a little bit, right? So that's why they're trying to distinguish for you what saves you from this is look at the question carefully. Part one says verify. Just let it go R equals in your calculator. Don't do any working for this. They're just expecting you to write the number. But then for part two, they're expecting you to take all of the numbers that are there and then go ahead and put them into your calculator. Okay. So, just coming back. Well, let, let me show you. I'll put them both side by side so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, that's not the window I want. There we go. Do you recognize, do you see where I've gotten these numbers from? This 13.73 and the 9.05? You see where I've gotten them from? Okay. 9.05? There. 13.73. There's 66. And so in here, I'm going to put 6 point what? Sorry, 69.4. And when you hit equals, you're going to get this number out. Does that make sense? Yeah. Once you've got those numbers, ta-da, there is your regression line.